Y'all are literally going to shake your head at this story for a couple of reasons. One, because of the story itself. And two, the reasoning that this person was going to do it. So this person's name is Daniel Slater, and this is coming out of Florida. And like I've told you, whenever there's a story that's coming out of Florida, it's usually some BS that follows. So this guy right here is 51 years old, and he was hiring or planning to hire a hitman to kill his ex-girlfriend and the man she's with now. But get this. Here's the kicker. He was going to put the blame or pin her death on Black Lives Matter. And I'm just sitting here with the screw face like, huh? What's come again? Like, what were you planning on blaming it on? Blaming it on? Like I told y'all, I have my issues with Black Lives Matter. But my issues and their issues with it are two different issues. And the way that he was going about it, this could have actually potentially set a innocent black person up to get hemmed up. This is just like when they be saying someone stole from them and the person was wearing all black and they were driving a black Escalade and all types of other, ugh, all other different things such as in that nature. You know, the usual spill that they always um, they always like to uh, talk about. But um, <laughs> this is it's laughable, but scary at the same time. But I'm going to go ahead and read this article. A Florida man who was planning to have his ex-girlfriend and some of her family members killed, devised a plan to pin the crime on Black Lives Matter protesters to throw police off his trail. There you go. Pin it on black people. That way they won't believe that you were the one that did it. But see, here's the thing. This guy has now exposed his racism. Not only is he a, he, is he a maniac, for wanting to hire someone to kill his ex-girlfriend, which means he is not over the relationship. And that just shows you what type of person he is. And he looks like a, a he looks like an abuser. An abuser physically and an, an abuser of drugs. I wouldn't be surprised. But the fact of the matter is, he, instead of doing this on his own and saying that he was doing it because of whatever the reason may be, he says, you know what? I'm going to pin it on some Black Lives Matter protests. That way, you know, they won't come after me. And I'm trying to figure out, like, what was he planning to do to make it to make them believe that it was Black Lives Matter protesters that did it? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Maybe this article will go into detail. Daniel Slater, age 51, of Jupiter, Florida, wanted his ex-girlfriend killed along with the woman's sister and brother-in-law whom he blamed for sabotaging the couple's relationship, court documents state. Slater believed he had found someone to carry out the job and instructed him to paint or spray paint Black Lives Matter at the scene of the crime, according to investigators. Slater devised the plan as protests erupted across the country last year in the wake of George Floyd's murder. So this wasn't recent. This was last year. During a critical point, oh, he, oh, he had this thought out. He had this thought out. This was, pre well, anytime you hire a hitman to do something like this, that's definitely premeditated. So he, it, all his charges should be first degree. Every last one of them. The person Slater was trying to hire, though, turned out to be an undercover FBI agent. Now Slater, who was indicted in June 2020 within days of trying to launch the plot, could serve up to 10 years in prison. He should get way more than that. He pleaded guilty last week to murder for hire in a deal in which federal prosecutors dropped several other charges against him. Both sides agree he should serve the maximum 10 years, although a judge will formally sentence him at a future hearing. His attorney declined to comment on the case. I would like to know what these charges were. Law enforcement officials began investigating Slater after a woman was found dead in the Everglades National Park in February 2020. The woman was identified as Brianne Slawball, a 26-year-old whom Slater had recruited to spy on his ex-girlfriend and kidnap and kill multiple individuals associated with her, a prosecutor said during a November 2020 federal detention hearing. Slawball was ultimately unable to go with this, through with this murder, the prosecutor said her body was later found in the Everglades, according to the Sun Sentinel. The Miami-Dade County Medical Examiner ruled her death an accidental drug overdose. So they say. What's the irony that this guy hires another woman to go and kill his ex-girlfriend and those associated with her, and when she decides that she can't go through with it, she ends up dead. And they say it's an accidental drug overdose. I'm starting to think maybe he put something in her drink. And that's how she OD'd or put something. I don't know. But yeah, I, I, 
Listen, any person that's willing to hire someone to take out an ex or anybody is capable of doing anything. The investigation into Slawbaugh's death led law enforcement to one of Slater's associate, associates, who later began cooperating with the FBI. In May 2020, prosecutors said Slater connected with an associate who owed him a drug debt. What did I tell you? I t- you can look at him and tell he owned that shit. He offered to wipe the associate's slate clean while sweetening the pot with cocaine and cash if the person arranged to have his ex and two of her relatives killed. The associate promised to connect Slater with a hitman. Slater was explicit in his instructions regarding his ex, prosecutors wrote in the court documents. He wanted her teeth knocked out, nose broken, and acid thrown in her face. Yeah, this this guy sounds like he was abusive. Like, you can just tell. You can look at him and tell by his words. He even helped the associate scout the sister's place. On June 8th, the two drove there together while camped outside. Slater pointed to a window, explaining how the sister and her husband sat in the living room at specific times, information he told the informant to use to shoot the two. Slater told the associates to spray paint the house with the words Black Lives Matter so members of the social movement would be blamed. Slater's associate, then working as an FBI informant, was wearing a wire the whole time. The hitman, the associate had Slater meet, was an undercover agent. On June 12th, the associate told Slater the hitman had killed both the sister and her husband. The two met later that night. The associate gave Slater pictures that had been doctored to show they appeared to be the bodies. Slater played the associate $400 and promised more when banks reopened. The indictment came three days later. I don't know what's worse about this story. The fact that this guy could not get over the fact that he's not with this woman anymore or the the fact that he was hiring a hitman to take out his wife, the one that he was going to get but backed out ends up dead from a a parent drug overdose. Uh, The spray painting of black or the spray painting of black lives matter to make it appear that they did it to throw them off the trail. And like I said, he could have did anything else to throw them off that trail if this was a success, but he chose Black Lives Matter to do it or uh, to put the blame on. So, like I said, they could have went after any black person that they could assume did this crime and they would have got hemmed up because of him. And that's what he chose. He didn't say all lives matter. He said black lives matter. It's no so crazy. A lot of PC say they don't like black lives matter for the reason they hate it. But this guy apparently liked them so much that he was going to pin the blame on them for something he had or was trying to have done. Like I said before, and I'll keep reiterating it, I have a lot of issues with Black Lives Matter, but I have even bigger issue when you have people like this guy who tries to pin crimes that he's trying to commit, whether himself or through another channel, on on black people. Because we have seen that throughout history and how many black people have gotten lynched behind allegations. So in my eyes, this guy's, like I said, is not only a homicidal maniac, or a potential one, but he also is a racist through and through. And he should get way more than 10 years in jail, in my honest opinion. And we still, like I said, don't even know what the charges were. I don't care if they not getting him for those charges, but what were the other charges? And they allowed him to take a plea deal. But there it is. Y'all let me know what y'all think.